It's time for today's travel and cruise industry news. With the latest from travel and cruises around the world, here's your host, Chili Falls. Hey, good morning, folks, and welcome to a special uh, time for travel and cruise industry news podcast on this Thursday, April the 11th, uh, 2024, coming to you again from Marietta, Ohio. And yes, folks, the uh, wheel for uh, wheel and rim for my car did not come in yesterday. Something about the, the warehouse that was going to ship it had to farm it out to a different warehouse. But I was anyway. I was sitting there as the guy was talking to the warehouse, and they absolutely guaranteed that it would be here this morning. We'll see. So anyway, I'm still in Marietta. All right, so we do have several news stories today. Got several things today. Not a huge day with news. But the top story this morning, this one kind of took me aback a little bit. Carnival to sell their Miami headquarters. What, are they going to move it to Peoria, Illinois or something? I don't know. A Juno debate. One of these people. They, they just, just can't seem to get their act together. Two Royal Caribbean ships to Australia for 2025. Carnival team honored for a rough sea rescue. Also today, an assistive audio system installed on Icon of the Seas and new shopping technology on Carnival Ferenci. That and lots more here at 8 o'clock this morning. Anybody that shows up today, folks, I certainly appreciate it. I'm not sure I would do that. But uh, at any rate, uh, you know, it's terrific. Uh, Gretchen's here. Hi, Gretchen. Uh, oh, dear, I'm so sorry you're stuck in Ohio. Jeez, get out of there quick. There's some severe weather coming our way. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Uh, yeah, as soon as I can, <laughs> you know, they're supposed to call me this morning and let me know the exact time it's going to arrive. But, yeah, who knows? So we'll see. Yeah, some of the weather that's heading this way. Uh, some of you might remember that uh, it well, it hit one of the places a tornado hit yesterday was Lydell, Louisiana. Some of you may recall I was staying in Lydell, Louisiana when a tornado was heading right at my hotel and it just happened to hit a big tree and it jumped up in the air and went across about 150, 200 yards on down came back down on the ground, but it missed the hotel. That was a little scary. But I saw that uh, this one hit Lydell, so they they have it quite often down there. All right. um, I guess I ought to think about uh, doing some serious stuff here, shouldn't I? Uh, Today, folks, is National Cheese Fondue Day. I, I like fondue. The first time I had fondue was on the first group travel trip that I took in 19, the summer of 1969 to Spain. And I had fondue one night. I'd never heard of fondue. And had it, they had the, the meat fondue and the cheese fondue and the chocolate fondue. So, uh, you know, I got into the fondue thing. And then quite often in college, when we'd have parties or something, we'd, we'd have fondue. That was a great thing. I'm, I'm sorry that it hasn't stayed as popular today as it was back then. You can always, if you're listening by the podcast, you can always access the podcast via my blog, which is accessadventure.net. Or wherever you get your podcast from, just search for Travel and Cruise Industry News and yeah, 
up pops the fat guy. We talk about travel and cruise industry news five days a week, sometimes more, uh, depending on what happens on the weekend. And I do this from wherever I am in the world. I'm like, you know, I'm in uh, a cruise haven here in Marietta, Ohio. I can can get out and cruise on the river. Yeah. The only problem with that, folks, you know, I would would love to have done some exploring while I'm in Marietta. I mean, you know, I've been killing time here for four days now. I can't drive anywhere. You know, the, the... Spare tire. It's only good for like 35 or 40 miles. And it's, you know, I don't know, seven, eight miles to the the guy that's fixing the tire. I've been down there like three times. So, you know, it's my car's been parked here in the parking lot. I've talked a couple of times about my friend, uh, Brian uh, Pogue coming over. We had breakfast the other day and he brought me a, a bottle of just awesome bourbon. Uh, today's his birthday. So, Brian, if you should be listening or catch us on replay, happy birthday, my friend. Um, all right, so got a couple of things before we get to the news stuff today. Hot Air Tom and Cindy uh, was stopped and, you know, they're on the, uh, they're doing their transatlantic out of New York on the Encore. Uh, they stopped in Bermuda. Actually, I think they did an overnight in, in Bermuda. But uh, just some pictures. Love the color of the water there. And then uh, a Bethany. Bethany Bartley, of course. This was uh, the sunset as they were sailing across the Mediterranean from Spain to Morocco. And this is Bethany stepping foot on African soil for the first time. I'm surprised all the trips she's made. She hadn't been to Africa before. She's done a lot of other traveling, though. It's awesome traveling. I love following Bethany. So anyway, she's in Morocco uh, yesterday. Of course, like everything in Europe, there's a fort and a church, cathedral. And that's uh, that's Bethany up at the fort. And then... I guess maybe the Moroccan sun was getting to her, so she grabbed a a Moroccan hat to wear. I don't know. So she got over back on the on the boat. You know, she's on uh, as America West, and she's been eating in the main dining room, and the meals in the main dining room just look phenomenal. She went to a specialty uh, restaurant last night, and uh, this was uh, bruschetta, and the starter was lobster ravioli, then a watermelon salad with, I don't know, some kind of cheese and several other things. The main course was uh, lobster tail with shrimp and calamari and and uh, scallops and some kind of ink pasta. I never heard of ink pasta. But that's what makes it look kind of black. And that's the pasta. And then pistachio uh, macaroons for dessert, followed by a hazelnut chocolate souffle with espresso sauce. I have to admit, I made for a pretty good, uh, pretty good meal. All right, guys, I'll be back with uh, today's news after a quick break from one of our network sponsors.
<clears throat> All right. Top story today comes from Carnival, and this one I found a little bit uh, shocking. It's actually broke yesterday. Carnival Cruise Line will be relocating its Miami office space within the next two years as the company has engaged real estate services to list existing property in the skyrocket real estate market. While the cruise line does not appear to be relocating outside of the Miami area, the downsizing in office space can be a smart financial step as office roles have changed since the company first started in the location more than 30 years ago. The current headquarters of Carnival Com Corporation has now been listed for sale as the company is seeking to downsize its overall office space. The current space uh, measures 470,000 square feet, whereas a space of 300,000 square feet is being sought for the relocation. <clears throat> so they're downsizing by about 170,000 square feet. This reflects changes in the office use in several ways, such as greater use of digital meetings and virtual spaces in the post-pandemic area, as well as more efficient staffing, streamlined equipment, and an online or remote workforce that requires less of the physical office footprint. <clears throat> Carnival Cruise Line first moved into the Doral office space in 1983, having paid $16.6 million for the real estate at that time. While no listing is yet publicly active for the space, skyrocketing real estate values in the area could mean a significant profit to be made for, with a successful sale, which could help the company's overall financial status and provide a boost for further investment. <clears throat> At the same time, however, the company will need to search for new space. There's no indication yet where that might be, though it would be logical to secure a space closer to the cruise terminals if possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, here's what bothered me about the story, folks. I, I don't... I don't mind the fact that they they want to sell the real estate. They want to downsize some. I can appreciate that. But they're giving up prime space in Miami, and they're going to buy prime space in Miami. I'm not sure that's the most uh, efficient way to go. It would be more efficient if they decided to move from Miami and those real estate prices to Port Canaveral with considerably lower real estate prices and still be at the major, you know, cruise port. Now, admittedly, if you put Miami and Fort Lauderdale together, that's closer. Oh, this might be my guy. I'm going to take this, folks. I'll come back in a second. Hello. Yes. Yes. Sweet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. So now let me see if I can get this back. I hope I'm still on the air. <laughs> that was the guy. The wheel has left Parkersburg on the way here. Okay. So uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. The, um, I'm just a little worried about, the, about this, uh, you know, trying to buy that much space, even though they're downsizing. And, uh, in Miami. Also, I find it interesting that, I mean, we're well past the pandemic now and a company of carnival size is still making use of the things that we had to go to to stay alive in the pandemic, which I think is awesome. So, 
it was interesting. And yeah, you know, we'll see. I mean, this isn't a done deal yet. It's just that they've they're listing it for sale. Somebody's gonna scarf that up. And in the meantime, Carnival's got to come up with uh with something to be adequate. All right, so I'm assuming I just checked over here in the chat room. Yeah, Gretchen says we still hear you. Good. Okay. I wasn't sure about taking a phone call. I don't know if you guys could hear that or not. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to do weird things. Did I do the commercial? I did do the commercial. Yes. I'm just a little confused, which is nothing unusual. All right, my friends up in Juno, they just can't seem to get their act together up there. You know, they're going to try to limit ships. Um, so the argument now is over fees. Have you ever wondered what cruise destinations do with port fees? They can collect from passengers who visit. In Juneau, officials are limited to using the funds in ways that benefit both the ships and passengers, which some of Juneau's plans may not do, according to Cruise Line International Association Alaska. That's clear, Alaska. I also didn't know that those, I thought those fees just went into the operating budgets for the, the collecting agent. During the busy Alaska season, Juno collects millions of dollars in passengers' fees from cruisers annually, a number that is expected to add up to more than $20 million in 2024. Based on the terms of the 2019 settlement, which came after a three-year legal battle between Juno Assembly and CLIA over how the port spends money collected from cruisers, Officials in Juneau are supposed to use those funds to better the city in a way that positively impacts the visiting ships. Fees for services that benefit a vessel that facilitate marine operations are constitutional, whereas those expen expenditures that do not benefit a vessel are unconstitutional, reads the settlement. The exp expenditure must have a nexus to the marine operations of a vessel. Benefit to passengers is not enough. The benefit must be to the vessel itself. However, according to Cleo, Alaska, some of Juno's plans for the 2024 port fees, nine to be exact, fall outside of what the settlement allows. In a letter sent to the city, Clea officials said that those projects do not meet the necessary criteria set forth by either the law or the settlement agreement. The plans at question include public Wi-Fi in Juno's downtown area, <coughs> increased bus service to the Mendenhall Valley, street cleaning and repairs, improved lighting for Overstreet Park and its canoe statue, and a revolving loan program, among others. These projects would take place in 2025 using the funds earned from cruise passengers in 2024. During a finance meeting held during the weekend, Juno Tourism Manager Alex Pierce said she thinks the assembly should move toward the funding the projects as planned, despite the objections from CLIA. She also claims the objections from CLIA came too late. You know, and CLIA Alaska are supposed to meet annually to discuss plans for the port fees, and Pierce alleges those objections were not raised during the annual meeting. So who knows what's going to happen? But there seems to be a problems... <laughs> abound in Juno. All right, so uh, Royal Caribbean, we haven't talked much about Royal Caribbean lately. 
Royal Caribbean's Anthem of the Seas will make her debut in Australia in 2025, while Voyager of the Sea returns to that destination. The two ships will sail a series of 45 seasonal voyages of varying lengths down under and to ports further afield in the South Pacific. All right, so the next story today, folks. Carnival Cruise Line Captain Niccolo Di Ranieri and his team on Mardi Gras received well-deserved recognition for a daring rescue the team performed in June of 2022, saving 16 lives in strenuous weather conditions that would eventually become Tropical Storm Alex. The honor was to, uh, was present, presented to Rainieri on behalf of the team as part of the Association for Rescue at Sea Annual Award Ceremony in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday. This one uh, jumped out at me this morning. You know, we've talked about Icon of the Seas a lot. Well, Royal Caribbean International has introduced an innovative audio over Wi-Fi assistive listening system on board Icon of the Seas, the world's largest cruise ship. The system will enable guests to plug in directly to the ship's audio system in the Royal Theater. While the primary or use would be for guests who have hearing aids, The technology has a wide range of applications from listening to your favorite game at Playmakers through a mobile app on your phone to choose the DJ of your choice at the silent disco. Might be interesting as this expands to other ships as well. And finally today, talking about innovative things. And folks, as you'll tell as we get into this story, this is not my bag at all. Effie Fine Jewelry can be found on all 27 of Carnival ships, but the shopping experience on board Carnival Firenze will be quite different from the rest. When Firenze has its inaugural sailing April 25th, guests on board will get the first opportunity to try out a new digital kiosk to shop at Effie. The kiosk, which is meant to make it easier to browse Effie's selection of more than 100 rings, allows guests to browse ring design, zero in on one of the pieces that appeals to their taste. It also uses artificial reality to allow guests to try on the rings virtually, eliminating the need to wait in long lines at the jewelry displays are being out of luck if the ring in question isn't in stock. Uh, some of you guys that shop on cruise ships will have to have to wade in on this one. You know, the only shopping I do on cruise ships, something in an emergency that you need. Yeah, you know, like the the time when I got sick on a on a cruise ship and I ended up with COVID before it was over with but you know that was when was that well that was after the the uh disastrous trip to to the panama canal to san diego so i had to buy cough drop you know cough uh, lozenges so i would go into the store to do that and the other thing is when they have a t-shirt sale i don't buy anything else i've never even looked at rings and watches and things like that so i have no idea if that's worthwhile or not, I, you know, it, it's like, of course, I, I don't want anything to do with cigarettes anymore. Uh, but, but the booze, you know, I'm not going to carry a bottle of booze home. I struggle with what I have to carry. So I'm not, I don't even, even think about that. So I don't know. Some of you guys will have to wade in on that for the old fat guy. He's just not a shopper. It's, you know, 
And maybe it's because I'm too cheap and too, you know, I started cruising when I was poor. I didn't have money for all that extra stuff. That's probably the reason that I'm, you know, I'm attached to main dining rooms. Because when I started cruising, yeah, I didn't have money for go to the specialty places. Of course, you know, that was when I think Columbus was ship's captain. But that's neither here nor there. All right. <clears throat> Let's go over and see who's fussing at me this morning. I mentioned Gretchen being here. Have you ever been on the bear excursion in Catch Can? I have not. Uh, and it's one of the things that I sent a message trying to find out if the transportation is accessible. Um, because I, I've not been to the bear excursion, and I'd like to do that. So, yeah, I'd be interested in that one, too, uh, Gretchen. But I'm trying to find out some some information on that. Uh, catch can. Uh, if, you, if you end up having some time in the afternoon, if it's not an all-day excursion, <laughs> go to the stupid logging show. I I thought, oh, well, this is nothing. You know, I'll, you know. Uh, but I'll go just have something to do. Oh my God, I laughed my butt off. It was so funny. Uh, that's a that's definitely a good stop and catch can. Uh, Katie's here. What's the update on your tire? Well, we got it on the air. It's coming. It'll be here sometime this morning. Joanne says, uh, "Good morning." Alaska Rainforest Sanctuary with the boardwalk system. I don't, Alaska Rainforest with the boardwalk system. I don't know. Uh, how far is it to it? That's the other thing. Does it take transportation to get there? Uh, and I, I can't tell you that one right off the top of my head. Hope you get on the road today. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt I'm getting on the road today. I'll be out of town hopefully by noon so I can get home at a decent time. <laughs> there's Todd. Have a safe trip home today. Yes, indeed. Anna says, good morning. Anna Velasquez says, good morning. It's one of the ex folks. Uh, good morning to you, Anna. All right, guys, again, thanks for you guys that are up early and stopped by to do this. Needless to say, I went early today because uh, I'm figuring that as soon as it gets here, I've got to be ready to jump in the car and run. So I'm pretty close to that. So I'll get everything processed and be ready to roll out of here literally at a minute's notice. All right, guys. Hopefully, tomorrow we'll be back in the studio. <laughs> Sounds like a broken record. But, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be home tomorrow to do the show. I don't know about Monday. I, Monday, I had planned on going down to Norfolk uh, to maybe try to catch Jason and Jen as they get on the, on the Legend and do some filming. But now that I've been gone like, you know, four extra days, I got to play that one by ear. So I might be doing something great, crazy again Monday, too. So we'll see. All right, guys. Uh, again, appreciate y'all being here. Smash that thumbs up button. My goodness, got a lot. I had more people actually watching today than I expected this early in the morning. So anyway, hit that thumbs up button. That helps us out a bunch. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. We're heading for 10,000 subscribers by the second Tuesday of next week. All right, guys. That's going to wrap it up for today. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, think about cruising, and hopefully one day soon we'll all get together on the high seas just like Gretchen and Fred and I are going to do in Alaska.
in August. We still have some cabins open and available, folks. Let me know. All right, guys. See y'all tomorrow. Have a great day. I regularly post videos on all facets of the travel and cruise industry. So if you like to keep up with the latest in cruise ships, ports of call, cruises themselves, chilly chats, and travel and cruise industry news, just hit the little subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner, hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when a new video is up or we go live. This video was produced by Chili's Cruises.